want to thank you guys so much for coming back to see our uh, our table talk show. That's what we want to call it now. We used to call it our Gospel Nova Scotia show, but it's table talk because we want to just uh, feel really comfortable to share uh, some of the things that God's been speaking to our hearts, and we hope that it's it's a sort of a comfortable thing to listen to as well. You know, we just want to put everyone at ease, too, that we are still growing, we're all growing in Christ, and Lem and I are, uh, we're just happy to have God at work in our lives, and, uh, you know, that he encourages us to kind of publicly share what we feel and think about him is something uh, we're sort of uneasy to do, but uh, it's 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 an uneasy thing for us to do sometimes, but... Um, we want to do it. We, we, we think we're obeying him when we're doing it. And, uh, so that's why we're doing this. We just, again, we're, we're not, you know, saying that we've got all the answers. We're just here to, um, encourage you guys yeah. because, um, you, you don't have to be perfect to put your hand to doing anything yeah. for God. You can just start wherever you're at and please don't be intimidated by performance or yeah. by um, somebody who you mentally think is able to do things better or smoother yeah. or whatever than you. Yeah. It's not about that. God's looking for deeply sincere people. Mm. And um, we hope our show inspires and encourages all kinds of people mm. to take up the call of God. Amen. We need you. Yeah. We need you. We need the body of Christ alive mm. like never before. We need you mm. to to answer and obey the call yeah. of God, and we need you to be disciples mm-hmm. um, for for him. And so uh, some of our problems and troubles in life are never going to be solved yeah. uh, by <clears throat> what Lem and I can, can do for each other, right? We're going to need help from the body, the Bible says, yeah. and... And that means you. Yeah. When you take up your mantle and you take up your calling, mm. and uh, don't be scared of anything or anybody, and Amen. and uh, or do it like well, like someone said, do it even when you are scared, do it. Yeah. Just make a deep down decision to do it. Yeah. And um, and and start mm-hmm. because the body needs you, and even that sometimes the people that work the hardest against you. Uh, are one day going to be desperately in need Mm. of you having (laughs) developed your gift and your calling to a point where you can help them. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, look at, look at, uh, look at Joseph. I mean, Mm -hmm. what happened in his life, eventually the very people that ran him out, Mm -hmm. that destroyed his life, so desperately needed him. Yeah. And uh, he was there for them in the end. And uh, so, and so are you going to be, and and we're going to be, mm. you know, and and so please, whatever it is God's asking you to do, just do it wholeheartedly. Mm. Um, my, I just kind of felt to, to talk a little bit today about uh, faith and feelings, and that's a big topic, mm. you know, it is. It, it, it's a really big topic, and in different churches that you go to, mm-hmm. you'll get all kinds of uh, advice <laughs> that go one way or the other. Some people are are really against feelings. They mm-hmm. want Christianity to be a very um, stoic, quiet, private uh, adventure. Mm-hmm. And they're not against faith in God. They just want it to be a really uh, quiet and personal faith in God, whereas other people really encourage uh, folks into a lot of um, expression, mm-hmm. public expression yeah. of their faith and worship. And uh, I just want, I was going to talk about that today, just some of the things mm-hmm. I feel God has uh, has shared, you know, has kind of encouraged me. Mm-hmm. And I really think it's a litmus test of your faith, how your feelings are, mm-hmm. how your emotional walk with God is. Mm-hmm. I think it's really important yeah. that it's emotional. Yeah. I think it's really important that it involves the deeper yeah. parts of your heart. If you look starting in the Old Testament mm-hmm. with King David, oh man. Yeah. It was a messy um walk with God. He had a messy walk with God. Yeah. But what one one of the most incredible things is that whether he was angry mm. and he was, 
you can read about him being almost angry with God, yelling at God mm. in the Psalms, whether he was angry, whether he was uh, sad, and very often was, disappointed, happy, uh, ecstatic. Yeah. Somehow, no matter what, he was sharing those feelings with God. Yeah. And the reality is we, we, we kind of look to share these perfect feelings with God as though we're trying to impress him yeah. with how encouraged and upbeat mm-hmm. we are. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it's not necessary. Most yeah. of the time it's false. Yeah. It's caught up in striving mm. to impress God where he, he um, he's just, I think he accepts your, all of, all of your feelings yeah. as faith. Amen. I really do. I'm going to mm. take you to scripture mm-hmm. in the New Testament, how um, God did accept feelings as mm. faith. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to take you through that today. And mm. just to let you know, don't be ashamed yeah. if, um, if uh, you know, y- y- you're, you're an emotional person. Yeah. And you're trying to somehow separate that from your faith. Mm-hmm. Do the opposite. Yeah. Don't separate it from your faith. Involve yes. it in your faith. Mm-hmm. And uh, you'll find that you're going to have a much more deep and true yeah. walk with God. Yeah. And so I, I'm going to be um, sharing a little bit uh, about how, about what I feel about faith and feelings here today. But mm. before I do, I'm going to give Lem some time to share today. And Lem, what did you want well, to talk Well, it's kind of along the same lines. Good. Excellent. Because um, I was going to call it the carnal Christian. Yep. Um. The story in Matthew 25, uh, the 10 versions where five were foolish and five were wise, I never understood that, you know? I mean, I understood in the sense, like, understand what the story is, but I never understood why the five foolish were not allowed into the wedding banquet, Mm. because they seemed to do everything. They had the lamp, yeah, and they only didn't have oil, yeah, you know? And so it just bothered me that the Lord would say to them in the end, I never knew you. Yeah. So I never understood why. I mean, they were ready. They were yeah. waiting for him. I mean, you guys know the story where the virgins were waiting for the bridegroom to come. Mm-hmm. And um, anyway, <clears throat> something happened to me in 2017 that kind of threw a light on it for me. You know, mm-hmm. I kind of understood it in a very deep way. I'll tell you what happened. <clears throat> so I was, I was having my daily devotions, reading the Bible. And this phrase came to my mind, always a bridesmaid and never the bride. I was like, what? I mean, it's just me thinking that or, Mm. you know, I mean, I think I've heard of that phrase before, always Mm -hmm. the bridesmaid, never the bride. It's like somebody who's didn't get a chance to get married, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. I mean, the thought was, and then again, it just wouldn't get out of my mind, you know, always a bridesmaid, never the bride. Yeah. And, I mean, to go back a little bit, in 2010, I had a real deep encounter with the Lord. I fell in love with the Lord Jesus, and I felt called to be part of the church, the bride of Christ. I understood that. Okay, we're called to be the bride of Christ. So I always thought that I was part of the bride of Christ, Mm -hmm. you know? I never thought anything different. So when this thought came, I thought, under who the Lord, is the Lord talking to me? Is it about someone else? Is it about me? And I I just forgot about it. Mm. So that evening... I was out at a store, um, at a thrift sh- uh, store, dropped my kids off at a youth group, and I was just, you know, spending some time there. And something caught my eye was a white T-shirt, so I pull it out, and on it were written, Bridesmaid. Mm. I was like, the Lord is talking to me. Mm. And I thought, I am that bridesmaid. I mean, I don't know why, right away, everything, I understood right away what he was trying to say. You are the bridesmaid. You're not a bride. Mm. I mean, I came home. I fell on my knees that night. I bawled. I just cried. I said, Lord, am I not your bride? Mm. Why are you calling me a bridesmaid? What? What? You know, like, you have to explain this to me. Because, I mean, that's my whole... Because in the end, the Lord says to... I mean, I knew right away I connected it. Mm. It was a foolish virgin. Mm. He was calling me a foolish virgin. I was like, why? Why? Because I love you. Because I was in love with Christ deeply. I mean, you can ask Corey. I was, mm-hmm. I was so annoying to be around, you know? And he would say, but I, I was like, okay, you have to explain this to me. Because in my mind, I was going to the banquet. I, I don't understand exactly everything. 
but I was going to the banquet, but now it's like the Lord said, no, if I came now, you would be the foolish virgin. Mm. Anyway, months, it took me a few months. And the Lord unraveled it to me. It's the, the difference between a bride and a bridesmaid. We're all called to be the bride, mm. but we don't want marriage. Mm. The bridesmaid is a carnal Christian. Mm. I mean, you're talking about feelings too. This is yeah. this is in a different way feelings. Yeah. This is carnal feelings. I think when you have feelings, you're talking almost about feelings um, that are keeping you from having a faith in God. Almost. I'll I'll, I'll tell you who yeah. explained it to me recently. I was listening to Bob Jones, the prophet, yeah. Yeah. on about soaking because I soaked a lot. I heard about soaking. And soaking was turning on worship music, or to me, I was going further away from worship music mm -hmm. just because I wanted to feel good about Jesus, mm -hmm. romantic thoughts about Jesus, you know, bride of Christ. But it was all feelings that were not sanctified. Mm -hmm. Bob Jones said, Real soaking is when you're feeling, when all your five senses are sanctified, mm -hmm. your imagination, especially, is sanctified. And I thought, Oh my gosh, I am doing it the wrong way. I was not connecting. See, when first, when when I fell in love with Jesus in 2020, 2010, it was through the Holy Spirit. Mm. But I went away to my flesh. Mm -hmm. I think flesh is different than feelings. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, there's two different things. Yeah. And I started walking in the flesh. Mm. I had created an image of Jesus in my head that was not true. Mm. I was worshiping an idol. Mm. Times when the Lord would try to speak to me, sometimes in my dreams, I would have nightmares. And, and in the end, I would just crying in Jesus name. And then I would wake up and I was like, why am I having nightmares? I was having no fruit in my life. Mm. I was powerless, mm. you know, and that's because I wasn't living in the spirit. I was living in the flesh because it was the idea of being in love in Je with Jesus, mm. but nothing deep. Yeah. It's like the Lord saying, I want you to connect with me through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is like Jesus being here. It's like, mm. no, Holy Spirit, I don't want you. I'm going to go th think about Jesus. Mm. The Holy Spirit is like, I am Jesus to you. Mm. You know, you have to connect with me by speaking in tongues. It's a gift given to us, a beautiful gift mm. to the Christian that we can connect with the Lord mm. through him, through, mm -hmm. through speaking in tongues, through mm. meditation, but not through our feelings, not through the flesh. Not through the flesh. You know, so the yeah. sanctified feelings yeah you know when you start connecting with the lord when you yeah. start feeling I mean, i'm telling you when the press when i changed i almost was scared to talk to jesus in english because i didn't know what to say to him after that mm. the fear of the lord came on me mm. and i was like <clears throat> i'm not going to speak i don't know what to say i was like okay god you're interested interested enough in me to reveal this mm. thank you because i'm not dead yet mm. so i have a chance to change yeah. you know yeah and so i i mean he was he is so beautiful so kind, so loving, you know, he would just fill me with his spirit right away. I would pick up my guitar, stop my soaking music because I was just scared of what I was doing, pick up my guitar and his presence would just fill me. I started writing songs. I mean, my whole life changed after that, mm. you know? Mm. So I, and, and then I thought, this is not just for me. This is for the body of Christ. Because I think some of us are living like a bridesmaid without a marriage and the marriage is only through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's through the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, yeah. not just a fantasy Christian life. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and in some other cases, I think the other extreme would be works. Mm -hmm. And that is as dangerous as living a fantasy, mm -hmm. romantic, romanticized, mm -hmm. you know, Christian life. Sure. Because I'm, I was emotional and I could go that way, mm. but it's very dangerous. And I think it's a wake up call to us. You know, the Holy Spirit is our connection with Jesus, with the Father. Mm. And let's not waste our time, mm. you know. So that's that's what I wanted to share. And, and mm. you know, let's be right. wise to the relationship. I think in the end, the oil yeah. is our fellowship with Christ with, yes. through the Spirit. Yeah. And because see, I used to, okay, I want to see a vision of Jesus. I started following that so much. Mm. And when I didn't have it, because yeah. I never had any vision of Jesus, yeah. I would just look at pictures of Jesus. Yeah. And but that's that's an idol. Yeah, that's it's an, an idol. idol. I mean, I'm going to tell you, I, I was, so yeah. I deleted all the 
pictures of Jesus. I got rid of mm. them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, uh, I, no, <laughs> you know, mm. Christ is God. He is not this human painting, you know, mm. and let me connect. And he is, he wants to connect. He's better than what we imagine him to mm, be. He's right. better. Yeah. He's even better. He's yeah. even sweeter. Yeah. More beautiful than the stupid little imagination that we have of Christ yeah. in our minds. Yeah. You know, he's better, he's greater, he's wonderful. Yeah. You know, and I think we're missing out. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, my what I'm going to be sharing on is um, when you close down in your feelings towards God, and whether that's an emotion, um, you are emotionally closing down during worship or during your own personal time with God, if it doesn't involve your feelings, it is a very telling sign of where your faith is. Mm. And uh, I was for a long time taught just the opposite, to do things outside of your feelings. And hey, letting your, uh, I think we're talking two different things. Letting your flesh be in control of your life. Yeah. Is a bad thing because the Bible tells you that when you live by your flesh, by just your wants, your human wants and desires, that's death. Yeah. It says it leads to death. But when you're led by the Spirit of God, Mm. it says that's life. Yeah. That's how life happens. And that's how, um, you know, great things happen in your life when you let the Spirit of God lead you. Mm. Uh, The one thing. I think is um, a problem is when you go to the point where, okay, I'm not going to be led by my flesh, and you almost turn Christianity into something that doesn't have feelings Mm. either because you're so scared of something being fleshly that all of a sudden it doesn't have any meaningful expression. And to me, I am sure in my heart Mm. that... Faith in in Christ, Christianity, is all about um, experiencing God. And when you're experiencing God, I mean, you look in the Bible, back in the book of Psalms, where it talks about the the, the hills melting like wax Mm. before the Lord. You know, and I know that's concerning the day of the Lord, but in a very small way, Mm. when we start in fellowship with God, some melting happens, yeah. shaking happens, mm-hmm. emotions come out of it yeah. that are deep. Yeah. And when they happen, whatever those feelings are, mm. um, it's a sign mm-hmm. that something is alive inside of you, mm. between you and God. Amen. You know, when there is no feelings involved in your faith, uh, your faith, it's fake. Yeah. Okay. It's robotic. Yeah. It's doing devotions. It's without feelings. You know, it's 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 a sign that mm-hmm. something is injured yeah. in your faith. Something has been taken um, aside in your faith mm-hmm. and been hurt. And uh, your inability to connect your faith with your feelings mm-hmm. uh, is a uh, a real sign that you're struggling. Yeah. You know, because emotions come Mm -hmm. uh, from your walk with God. And, uh, you know, don't be ashamed when they do. I want to share something uh, with you guys. It's from um, uh, Luke 7. It's in verse 36. So Luke 7, verse 36. Okay. And uh, let's see. Let's start. Yeah. Right there. Then one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner. Uh, I don't know what she was doing, but anyway, she was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's emotion. Mm. Uh, I mean, 
she, um, she was pouring out her feelings to God. Mm. She was convinced that this was God. Mm. One of the few people, really, I, I really think even the, um, even the disciples for a long time thought, yeah, this is a really good guy. Yeah. And he's really powerful. And wow, what a, what a prophet. But Jesus finally put that all the rest and said, who do you, who do you think that I am? Mm. Well, a good man or a good teacher or, you know, you're, no, Jesus, I'm the son. He let it be known. He was the son of God. Yeah. Well, this woman was a was sh- somehow deeply sure mm-hmm. Jesus was God, on, and he had come to earth. Yeah. And she was going to take her opportunity, mm-hmm. knowing that how in heaven was she ever going to get this close to God? Yeah. Even in heaven? I don't know. I don't even know. Yeah. But she thought, I am taking my opportunity yeah. now. Mm. And she grabbed his feet. Yeah. Fell at his feet, and like the Bible says, she uh, she showed the emotions of love, yeah. care, and worship because mm. no one was shoving her away. Yeah, he didn't push her away. Mm. Well, there's too much feelings there, you know. You just want to yeah. step back a little bit, calm down, <laughs> would you? No, that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. He didn't tell her to calm down. Yeah, he was all right with it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and. Um, <clears throat> You know, look at verses uh, 44 to 46. He turned to the woman and said to the Pharisee, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she's washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not stopped to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Mm. Now, you know, it's amazing, isn't it? The two sides of, 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 of it there. The one guy gave, he didn't treat Christ as special at yeah. all. Okay, mm-hmm. his emotions. Well, of course, because he had no faith. Mm-hmm. He was a, Phar- a Pharisee that invited Christ into his home as though he was just a good man yeah. or a mystery. Really, probably yeah. that. Yeah, just to figure him out. But this other woman had figured him out. Yeah, and she was investing emotion into him. She mm-hmm. she was investing those love, those kisses, those tears mm. into Christ. She wasn't going to let any situation deter her from doing that. Yeah. And uh, I I want to uh to encourage you. We we've made faith into a into a proclamation, mm. a declaration, uh a memory verse that you somehow can remember. And thinking, well, if I can, if I can, uh, you know, have these faith declarations, faith, um, I don't know what they are, confessions, or well, none of those were being made. Mm-hmm. None of those were there. There was no words being shared yeah. that were that that were meaningful uh, from from the Bible to the to, to Christ. Am I telling you those <laughs> things are wrong? I don't know. I know that something happened there mm-hmm. on a much deeper level emotionally. Yeah. And when you are investing your feelings mm-hmm. into God, when you've never seen him and you haven't, and, uh, and uh, you have no clue how, uh, what, what, what his form looks like, and you're investing emotions, your feelings are faith. Yeah. When you're crying, before God, those feelings are faith. How do I know? Look at the very last verse of uh, Luke chapter 7, verse 50. Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go Man. in peace. Wow. What she wow. had done was faith. Mm. Christ was accepting her feelings mm. as faith mm-hmm. in him. That's all she chose. Yeah. That's all she'd shown. Yeah. She'd only shown those emotions, deep emotions, before God. Mm. And he said, he let us know that those feelings were faith. Mm-hmm. You know, so the idea that you're supposed to have a stoic, uh, you know, emotionless um, walk with God 
is really the worst sign. It's a sign that something is wrong mm -hmm. between either you and God or you and your brother. Yeah. You know, when you're unwilling yeah. to open up and worship or open up mm -hmm. and, and have feelings. And I know that's true. Yeah. Even in my own life. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I want to have an open and emotion-filled mm -hmm. uh, emotion walk with God, even if it's where I'm being real about um, how hard it is to connect yeah. with Him, mm -hmm. you know? Even if that's the case, so what? Yeah. You're, you're still connecting him with Him on the basis of frustration. You're, you're voicing your frustrations yeah. to God, and those frustrations are faith. Yeah. And it, yeah, that's true. and and when you put that faith out, mm. eventually healing will come back. Mm -hmm. Help will come back. Yeah, you're not just saying words into a big void. It's not that mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. It will come back to you, and it will heal. Yeah, and uh, and help and help you. And and passionate Christianity is not just for the baby Christian. Yeah, not at all. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I got saved uh, back when I was in grade ten at the side of my. Uh, my parents' house in in Sackville, and uh, I I was passionate, in love with God, full of feelings, and to let that go mm. and think that was only for the the day when I was first saved is a huge error in judgment, and we need more folks who are older, yeah, uh, older in years to get up and show people they can sing, they can dance, they can yeah. have. Uh, an enjoyable and and life filled walk with God right up to the end of their days, mm. you know. Don't be stoic. Don't give in yeah. to the idea that you're beyond the uh, uh, feelings yeah. in your faith. Yeah. Don't uh, continue to just invest those feelings in God, and He will do an amazing thing in your life. Mm. Look at verse forty seven. I'm just going to share this before uh, we we end this today. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Mm. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. The reality is there was no difference between her and the Pharisee. They were sinners, yeah. both of them. Both of them were going to hell without Christ, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, she had a revelation of it. Mm -hmm. She had a revelation of the fact that she needed Christ, yeah. and she was going to put her faith in Christ. The Pharisee had no revelation of it. He was obviously fighting that, mm. the idea that his sins were great. Whereas she had a revelation, she wasn't self-righteous. Yeah, She was in desperate need of Christ in order for her to, to find God and to be saved. Mm. And, uh, and she uh, made that decision that she was going to just invest her full heart mm. into um, into Christ. I'm just encouraging you, don't let your pride or your self-righteousness uh, get in the way yeah. of your walk with God, your love walk with God. Kill those things. Yeah. Let them be put to death in your life yeah. so that you can uh, you can begin to enjoy a fruitful and a faith-filled walk mm. uh, with God every single day. Mm. And so anyway, that's what I felt to share today. Yeah, I hope that's good, and I thank you, honey, yeah. for sharing what you had to share too. Uh, God bless you guys. We've got some great speakers coming up over the next few weeks, and uh, then we're going to be having an Easter special uh, probably on the 9th, I think, of April. East, that's Easter mm -hmm. Sunday. So we're going to have an Easter special uh, for that day. So you guys have a great week, and um, we'll see you again next week with a new interview, and, uh, and uh, you're just going to love it. Okay? God bless you guys, and have a great week.